Hey, I wanted to talk to you today about finding your rhythm, which is, uh, we could also reference as finding our rhythm or finding God's rhythm, but we'll get there uh, as we go, as we journey through. So uh, you may have heard this language that we've used recently, and we've used many times in our church journey, but a season of transition. Uh, so moving from one season into a new season, uh, and there's very much a spiritual dimension uh, to that, but it manifests in the natural. So we experience then uh, different things when we are transitioning in God. And again, you don't, we don't, we didn't ask for a transition season. We didn't uh, invite it, but God's like, cool, we're we're just, we've we've done a season and now I'm taking you into a new season. And so there is an importance that we recognize the season that we're in, the season that we're coming out of and the season that we're going into and and kind of where we are on that journey. And we take as a responsibility, as as a leadership uh, of this church, that we help everyone to transition well. But sometimes in transitions, there can be uh, things, it can be a struggle, there can be grumbling and complaining. Um, I'm I'm not hearing any of that, but that can just be some of the things that can be discomfort, there can be challenge, there can be a whole lot of things that get stirred up and it's almost like it's in the atmosphere. And so you can just kind of pick up and and sense what's going on. Uh, And we can get kind of, uh, what would the word be, discombobulated maybe, is that a good word? Yeah, I don't know if there's actually a word or not or just from like a cartoon or something, but um, it's good. But it's important then in this season as God is changing things that we are coming into the right rhythm with God, that we're coming into His timing, that we're aligning ourselves with Him. So two weeks ago, Peter Christensen shared a word and in that he talked about, um, you know, what are, what's God saying no to? And are we saying yes to God when He is saying no to something? So we, are we saying yes when God's saying no? And I don't mean that, that we're in conflict, but when He says no, we're saying, okay, I agree. That, that old thing needs to go. And sometimes this is the thing in, in, it, in church life, in our own journeys, it could be something that was good and actually isn't even bad. It's just not for now. It's not for the new season that God is taking us into. Uh, Amy shared last week, um, you know, it's important that we are leaning into the great I am and God's I will, that we are not leaning on our own strength, on our own understanding, but coming into alignment with who God is and what He has planned and the fact that He will accomplish what He said He's going to accomplish. And it's also important that we're coming into alignment with God's rhythm in this season, God's timing. Whatever pace that the Lord is going at, that we are in alignment with Him, that we are not running ahead of God and we're not lagging behind the pace that He is going. But also something about rhythm that there's, it's more than just time. It's also, it's like everything coming into alignment. If you imagine within a band and, and a band playing together, there is oftentimes what's called a rhythm section. Uh, and that's usually can be like the drums and the bass and they kind of set the rhythm of the whole band and the other instruments and the vocalists kind of come into alignment uh, with that rhythm section. And rhythm is a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. So again, God is moving at a pace in this transition season. And for some of us, the pace might be faster than what we're used to. I don't know if you're feeling like God is accelerating things at a pace that you're not used to, or maybe even makes you feel uncomfortable. Is anyone? Anyone feel like, man, like things are just all of a sudden like accelerated? Anyone put your hand up if you feel, okay, a few people, all right. I'm feeling that. And yet simultaneously feeling like, but this pace is good. So it feels like all of a sudden coming into rest and kind of slowing down. I'm on long service leave at the moment. So I'm taking two days a week of long service leave. And not long after me deciding to do that, it felt like all of a sudden things started to crack open and all of a sudden 
more things started happening uh, in, our, in our church journey. So one of those big things is the forward movement with our Transformation Centre and, uh, and the wonderful adoption of uh, the City Rise family, of the crew and soul and these things. But it was very much has been an acceleration season. So again, it's not just in the ministry side, but then we also have this property that is here that God has gifted to house these things. And uh, I also have some responsibility uh, in helping that to happen. And then I also, there's this church thing that I senior pastor sometimes, you know, and, uh, and, there's, and there's my own family and my own house and my own renovations. And we're building another small granny flat out the back soon. And so I'm feeling like it's like, yeah, wow, things are accelerating. Things are moving at a different pace. And yet at the same time, I feel like I'm in God's rhythm because it doesn't seem overwhelming. It doesn't seem too fast. And it doesn't seem like I'm lagging behind and missing things, but finding myself aligning with God's rhythm. And the fact is that rhythms are hardwired into God's creation. If you imagine, maybe another word for rhythm rhythm is like a, a habit or just timings of things. So there are hours in a day, 24 hours in a day. There are seven days in a week. There's months and years, there's seasons. Even the reality of time itself, where God exists outside of time and yet creation is bound by this thing called time. And if you ask a philosopher or a scientist like what time is, uh, I think people probably actually even struggle to tell you what it is, but it's this sense of being bound into something where things move together at the right time. But God is hardwired into even creation itself that we can know. So driving, you know, this morning and seeing all of the little, is it the, are they daffodils or canola or whatever it is, the little yellow flowers on the side of the road to spread everywhere. And then just when I ducked out, there was all the little um, flies, flying ants going. You just know, this is the sign of a change of seasons. Like they come out at this time of the year, kind of this warmer weather and, and what's happening. So we understand that God works in times and seasons. God has established it to bring order to His creation. When we think about rhythms, we can think about in music, there is certainly rhythm and timing and the difference when a band is in rhythm together and following the same rhythm versus them being disconnected and out of rhythm. There's a noticeable difference, particularly in how pleasurable it is to listen to. People talk about finding their rhythm in running So it's kind of you get to a certain pace and a certain stride and there's this, I've kind of just found my rhythm in this this right pace that matches where my energy levels are. It matches, you know, how the the strength and, and my body type and all these different things. There's the rhythm of troops marching. Have you ever seen troops marching together? And I was, I was looking into this because I'm like, why do they do that? Well, one of the reasons they say is because they can actually be in a tighter formation when they're all moving at the same time. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but when people walk, you actually move left to right when you walk, very, very slightly. I actually watched a mini documentary on uh, the natural frequency of bridges. Have you ever seen those things where bridges start to sway and move either in the wind so they have, to, they have to design bridges, like long suspension bridges in a way that they don't start picking up in the natural frequency of, uh, of wind. But there was a, a bridge in, I think it was in the UK. And all of a sudden there was big crowds of people that just opened. And as these people are walking across, the bridge starts to shake and move side to side. And the whole thing now is just wobbling like this. But they reckon it, all it is, is just people slightly, as you take a right step, your body puts weight and moves slightly to the right. And when you move, take a left step, you move slightly to the left. And all of that combination of all of those people coming together made the bridge sway. So actually when troops are marching, if they come to march across a bridge, they will change the formation of their marching to be kind of where one's going one way, one's going the other in order to prevent that from happening. It's fascinating. Might not be relevant or have any point, But there's a lot of things that I like to learn about. They're interesting things. I've got some interesting things coming later on that if you're a musical nerd, you'll really appreciate. So apologies to the rest of you. You know, we all sleep in rhythms. We sleep each night. 
We eat a certain number of meals a day at certain times. It's just natural for us to live. Our bodies will tell us, hey, it's time to do this certain thing. Your bodies will start to tire. You know, we don't go to sleep because we go, oh, it's got this time, my, you know, it's just my, I'm just telling myself that I'm going to go to bed. We start to feel drowsy, we start to feel tired. Our body gets into a natural rhythm of when we sleep. And these rhythms help us to function well. They keep us functioning. They help to keep us in order is the reason why we have these rhythms in our life. So when we apply that to our relationship with God, rhythms in our life can help to keep us in order. They can help to keep us functioning well. And we need to then start to look at, in my life, do I have rhythms with God in my relationship with Him that are helping me to function better? Or am I living kind of rhythmless and just hoping that I kind of pick up the tempo and, and kind of jump in every now and then? You know, it's when people say, you know, oh, can you sing? Everyone can sing. Not everyone can sing in tune. Everyone can play the drums. They just can't necessarily play them in time. So there are a lot of things that we can do and we can feel like I'm, I'm just catching God here and there sometimes, maybe if I'm lucky but I'm not living in this daily sense of rhythm and timing with the Lord where I know I'm in step with what He's doing, that I'm attuned to what He is saying, that I'm listening in and I'm moving in that direction with Him. In Leviticus chapter 26, starting in verse three. So this, uh, Leviticus chapter 25, the Lord has just outlined uh, to Moses what the, uh, the year of Jubilee and this kind of uh, process of seasons. And so uh, things like you will, uh, you know, have a, you'll plant for six years and on the seventh year, you'll have a break again. You've got the six days of work and the Sabbath rest. And now he's talking about six years of, of, uh, of working the ground and the seventh year allowing it to rest. And then that seven multiplied again together to be 49. And then on the 50th year is the year of Jubilee. And that's when you return home and there's the cancellation of debts. There's all of these things. But God has just outlined to them in this chapter of the Scriptures ways in that for them to live as His people according to a particular timing, a particular set of rhythms. And then now He outlines in 26 the benefits and the fruit of observing these things. So it says, if you walk in my statutes and observe my commandments and do them. So that's these years of, of seeding and harvesting and resting, being in this rhythm with God. It says, then I'll give you your rains in their season and the land shall yield its increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall last to the time of the grape harvest and the grape harvest shall last to the time for sowing. You notice the words time there, time for harvest, time for sowing. And you shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land securely. I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. And I will remove harmful beasts from the land and the short sword shall not go through your land. You shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword. I love this. Five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall chase 10,000 and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. There's a principle he's saying five will chase a hundred. There's a, there's a sense of multiplication. I think this sometimes can be the hardest things for people in God is to say, well, if I'm gonna get into God's timing and I'm getting out of my timing, is God going to accomplish the same things if I'm at rest than He will if I'm working really, really hard? Is God going to provide everything that I need if I'm not out there providing for myself? Again, right at the beginning of chapter 26, it talks about removing idols from, from your land, removing all the idols. So that's again, and you can go back and listen to my sermons on idolatry. I wasn't talking to you. Uh, listen to my sermons on idolatry, but it, 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 that's, it's really this kind of heart issue we need to deal with. But the thing is, if we are, sometimes there's this fear that if I rest in God, then what He has for me to do won't get accomplished. Does anyone ever feel like that? Just me, awesome. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, but we, we, we get concerned, like I've got to work hard. And I mean, working hard is, is, is a good thing, but if God's saying rest and I'm out working, there's a problem. And if God's saying go and work when I'm at rest and I'm out of rhythm, then there's a problem. Things aren't going to happen well. But I love this idea. He's saying, if you do these things, if you follow my patterns, I'll actually bring multiplication. So you'll put in a small amount of effort and I'll produce a significant amount of outcome. When we rest into God, when we have our dependency on Him, God can and His promise is that He will accomplish significantly more than if we are striving in our own strength. It's the way that God works. It's how the kingdom of God is wired that we would live in that way. And I absolutely see it. I know in, in, uh, in, with the Transformation Centre, there's just things where we're, we're just being obedient to the Lord and, and His timing. And then literally all of a sudden, it's just increase comes. And then provision comes. And you know, right connections come. And you're like, man, we're not pushing this thing. We're not striving in this. We're just being obedient. We're, we're utilising the resource that God has given us. We're not being lazy about it, but we're also not striving and going ahead of God. And then all of a sudden you start to realise, hey, wow, all of a sudden there's this government grant that would suit perfectly what you want to do. And, uh, and it's, instead of you know, searching out the money, we could just give you millions of dollars to do what you need to do. It's like, well, yeah, cool. That, was a, that wasn't our plan. Uh, but there's God's plan. But what you do when you're just obedient and you're in the rhythm of God, all of a sudden He opens up doors of provision for what you need and yet you're doing less. And then again, this is not about being lazy. Laziness won't get you anywhere either. It's about being in rhythm. And if God's pace is fast, then it's about you being fast. And if God's pace is slow, then it's about you being slow. But it's about matching the timing that God has for you. He says, I will turn to you and make you fruitful and multiply you and will confirm my covenant with you. God's promises, He'll confirm the promises that He has made with you. If you are willing to yield and partner in with His rhythm, God will confirm the promises that He's made with you. You shall eat old store long kept and you shall clear out the old to make way for the new. Amen. I will make my dwelling among you and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you and I will be your God and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt that you should not be their slaves and I've broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk erect. Amen. So when we align ourselves to God's rhythm, we enter into His blessing. We enter into His promises. We enter into what God has for us. And this is at a personal level. This is, might be at a family level. This is at a corporate church level. This is at a global church level. I think too often, maybe as individuals or as churches, that we think we know, we assume that we know what God wants. So then we just run off and do it. And if you've had one of your kids do that, and you start kind of halfway through the instruction, they're already taken off to do it. You're like, I haven't finished telling you what I, I want to do. You got the first bit, you know, and then five minutes later they come back and, oh yeah, I did what you asked. It's like, well, you didn't actually hear everything that I asked for you to do. So you've only done half of what I asked you to do. But we can get caught up thinking, well, we, yeah, we know we've got the Bible and we've seen what's happened before and God clearly just wants us to do that again. But maybe He doesn't want to do what was done before. Maybe He wants to do a new thing. And maybe we shouldn't assume that we actually know the plans of God. Because the Bible, the Apostle Paul is clear that actually the plans that you have, even if they're God's plans, His plans are significantly greater than that. So we, as soon as I think, I, no, I think I've got it all figured out. I think I've got my life mapped out with God. It's all good. And God's like, no, no, I want to do significantly, abundantly more than that. So when we align ourselves with God's rhythm, we enter into His blessing. And again, to align yourself with rhythm, it's all about following. Not all can set the rhythm. If you think of in a band's environment, 
There is one who sets the rhythm. You can't just all be doing your own thing and expect it's going to align up. There is one that sets the rhythm and the rest follow. For us, God is the one who sets the rhythm. God who is the one who sets the rhythm in your life. God is the one who, who really we should be consulting about our day and how it flows and what do you have for me, Lord? And, and where are we going? And when do you want me to move? And when do you want me to rest? When do you want me to run? And when do you want me to sit down? And God will instruct you in those things. He might give you clarity in a time of prayer. He might give you instruction through a prophetic word. It might come through reading the Scriptures. But if you ask Him, He will speak to you and He will give you that direction. So some of the blessings of being in rhythm with God, a rhythm builds consistency. And I think sometimes in our relationship and our journey with Jesus, I don't know if you ever struggle with being consistent with God. Again, just me. I'm all alone here today. Sometimes we can because God doesn't, God commands things, but He doesn't demand things. Because of the way that God always operates in relationship with you, there is always a measure of freedom. So you always have choice to obey or to disobey. No matter how mature you are, no matter how long you've been following Jesus, you can disobey God at any time. But in that freedom then, sometimes if we're not intentional and we're not building these rhythms and we're not being consistent with God, it's very easy for the demands of life to take us away, to distract us. And we have a choice. We can either live by the demands of life or we can live by the commands of God. That's, that's our choice. We can live by the demands of life or by the commands of God. Now again, if you have children, you'll understand. It's hard sometimes to live because you are living in a, in a constant state of demand. <laughs> and they're good demands. I'm like my kids have good desires to want to spend time with me or to, to want something from me. They're good things. But if I spend all of my time only giving my attention to the demands of a child and I'm not giving my attention to the commands of God, I'm also not meeting the needs of my children because I'm so aware of meeting what they feel like they need, which is oftentimes like chocolate or things like that, you know, it's like, but you've got to go, no, I've actually got to, I've got to be setting the tone. I've got to be living by a different rhythm and not one that's living by the demands of life. It could be in your job. You might have a, a, a job that there is demand upon you. And again, then you can start to live by the demands of your job the demands of your friendships, the demands of different relationships, whatever it is, if that's the thing that's setting the rhythm of your life. And because God is not putting a demand upon you, it can sometimes be easier to say no to Him in order to say yes to somebody else. And especially if we're having our needs met in saying yes to people's needs. Because sometimes that can make us feel really, really good. And yet we're ignoring the Lord, we're getting out of rhythm and we're not actually achieving that which God would have us achieve. We think we're doing lots of good things and God's like, if only you got into my rhythm, I would multiply those things and you would put in far less effort and get a far greater outcome and people would be far more blessed by your life. So rhythms build consistency, rhythms build dependency. We need to be dependent upon God. But again, it's so easy to be independent, to be dependent upon ourselves, our ability, our skills, what we can offer. The blessing of rhythms is that it expands our vision. When we are in regular times with the Lord, we get to see what He sees. We get to have His sight, which again is far more significant than our sight. And again, when our eyes are on the demands 
of life, then actually what we see is all of those things that are drawing attention from us rather than actually being positioned with the Lord and looking at them from a totally different perspective and saying, God, you've got a far greater plan here than what I thought. I just thought I was coming to work just to get the job done and tick off all the boxes. And the Lord's like, no, no, I, I, I didn't position you there to, to do your job well. I positioned you there to bring my kingdom. I positioned you there to have that extra conversation with that person. They said, no, I can't have that conversation with them, God, because I'm busy doing this other thing. And the Lord's like, but you just missed that opportunity. To understand in God's timing, He, he just, he, he what's the word? Uh, to a different beat of a drum, what the, what's the, he, yeah. He marches to the beat of his own drum. That's it. When that thought popped into my head, I should have just let it go. It's all good. So when we are in rhythm with God, it, it helps to build consistency in our relationship with Him, which is really important because I don't know the last time that I checked, but God is an invisible God that doesn't demand things from me. And he's not screaming in my ear all the time. So it, can, it naturally means I've got, to, I've got to intentionally pursue him. I have to intentionally keep my focus and my attention on him. And I love that rhythms help to keep consistent in that place. And again, I can look at, well, I can pay for that. And I guess I can put my hand and then I can do those things. And I start to then, have my dependency upon myself or upon other people, not on the Lord. And then I can get so caught up in seeing what needs to be done, I actually don't see what God sees and I don't see what He wants me to see and what He actually wants to get done. So I know for me, when it comes to my time with God, I'm a builder, not a, like Bob the Builder, builder. I, I do do that as well, but I'm like, for me, I have to be building things. I have to be creating, I have to be making something happen. I'm not a good manager. I'm not a good, like once something's like up and running, I'm not the, the person that's just gonna sit around and make sure everything's okay. I'm like, I'm on to the next thing. I love to, to pioneer, I love new things. I just, for me sometimes, like on my days off, it's like I get to the end of the day and I'm like, I have to build something today. I just have to accomplish something. I have to take something from that state and put it into this state of being. Okay, I have to do something. That's just how I'm kind of wired. And you might not be that. You might be a great manager and God bless you. We need people like you. I'm not saying being a builder is better than being a manager, being a, just like keeping things functioning well. If, if we didn't have those people, then I'd be in trouble. Um, but, but so I'm just saying it's different, but some people love this. No, just give me the same each day. Just, I'll just work my way through stuff. I'm all good. And they just love that kind of consistency and all throughout the day. It's good. Bless you. I think, you know, Helene loves numbers and I don't love numbers. I love seeing, I love, uh, there's, I love colours. There's the red and the black. And I know one's better than the other. Black is good. Black is good. In most cases, really it should be like green and black, you know, but well, yeah. So anyway, that's all I know. That's what I like to know about numbers is the colour of them. But, um, but you know what I mean? Like we're all kind of wired differently, but for me, I'm a builder. I've got to be building. So each day I get excited about my day and I'm thinking about what I'm going to accomplish today. And it might be accomplishing, you know, surviving eight hours of meetings with people. Oh, that was... I meant thriving, not surviving. I meant thriving, thriving in eight hours of, you know, but like, but I love that because I know that things get accomplished in those times. But I'm thinking through my day. But then when it comes to having like a quiet time in the morning, I'm already, by that time, I'm already like, well, I got to do and I could do this, yes, and I could do it. And how do I match the time with that? And then I'll get in it. Okay, I've got to stop past there before. And I'm all in that space. And then to go in and just then, oh, just come to a place of rest. I'm like, I'm already fired up. Does anybody relate to this again? It's just, it's just hard to do that. So having a quiet time takes discipline for me because when I'm with the Father, that's a place of rest for me, which is a good thing. It's not a place of anxiety, it's not a place of fear, it's not a place of concern, it's a place of rest, it's a place of peace. 
But in my heart and my mind, I'm already dreaming about growth and expansion and, and newness and accomplishment. So then to come in and go, I've got to come into this place of rest now, it can be a struggle for me. So it takes discipline in order to put myself in that place. Now again, I know that there's much more, I'm not going, even going in there, I just want to be with the Lord and, and whatever His agenda is for that time. So I'm not even, I, I rarely will go in and, and read my Bible or try and do anything. I just try and be with God, just try and rest with Him. And that's, and so I might put on some like soaking kind of worship music and just sit with Him. I try not to think about my day, I just try and be present with God. But I know for me that's where, but to, if I don't have that rhythm, what I also find is when I go into my day, I accomplish far less than what I accomplish when I start my day with the Lord. When I start in rest, I find that I actually accomplish more because things are in order for me. I've come into His rhythm. Because sometimes excitement can, and that anticipation can also then be, you know, start to create this a sense of anxiety or you go, now I have to accomplish these things and I've got all of these things. I start to get stressed and start to get worried and how am I going to do this? And no, now I'm not going to be able to do that today. And what's that going to mean? When's that going to push that thing back to? And you get all in a kerfuffle. You get discombobulated and kerfuffled. But when I start in that place of rest, when I come into alignment, when I step into God's rhythm and I realise, you know what? God is not worried. God is never stressed. God is never anxious. He's not worried. So if I'm worried and God's not worried, something's out of order. I'm not in His rhythm. Now, if God's worried, then I should be worried. But He's just never worried. It's one of the benefits of being God, I guess. But we get to taste the fruit of being a child of God, which means we get to come into alignment with His peace, that shalom peace, that perfection of the law, that we get to rest into that place with Him. But again, if we don't have a rhythm of, of entering into that place, then where are we gonna find Him? Are we expecting God's just gonna crash in halfway through my day? I mean, that would be really nice. But I think He values Himself a bit more than that. So if we don't start with the right foundation, it's like building a house roof first. It just doesn't work. You start with the foundation and then everything gets built upon that. Now again, I'm talking about a rhythm in, in, a, in a day. This, is a, this should be really the framework of our whole life, that our life is built upon the foundation of God, Jesus being the cornerstone, the one who sets all the dimensions of whatever we build in our life. But it comes down to our daily rhythm with the Lord, our daily time with Him. A rhythm in my day helps me to keep in rhythm with God. Now, sometimes I miss it. Sometimes things come up. Sometimes it just, it, it, it can't happen. But I notice the difference. And I notice that when I haven't set that rhythm, then even throughout the day, it's harder to hear Him because I'm out of time. And it's so much harder to get back into time when you're out of time. And when we have these rhythms in our life, we have personal rhythms, there are family rhythms, there's corporate church related rhythms that we operate in. So for us as a church community, every Sunday we're here. It's just a rhythm of our community. We don't have to do it on a Sunday. We don't have to do it every week. We could do it every fortnight if we wanted to. We could not do it at all. But for me, I feel like this is a really healthy rhythm for my life to be in because I find that it helps me to realign with God and with His people and where we're going as a, as a community. And that impacts my life. So I never wake up thinking, oh yeah, I'm probably not gonna do that today. It's very well, I mean, I was sick last week, so I didn't come. Um, but it's very, I, I just, I've never missed a Sunday just because I didn't feel like being here. Um, 
I mean, and it's not just because I'm, it's my job. It's like, I, well, I want to be here and I know the benefit of it. I know the benefit of being, and sometimes it's like, I'm, so I'm not saying I want to be here all the time. No offense. <laughs> don't take it personally. But like sometimes I'm like, sometimes I'm tired or I'm just like, I just don't want to do this or I'd just rather, you know, do something else. But I know the benefit of being gathering corporately to worship together, to be in fellowship, to share communion together. It, re, it realigns me with God's rhythm. It helps me to tune my voice into what He's saying. And sometimes it's the other people in the room that help you to do that, that keep you attuned to God. You know, we have four nightly rhythms of our life hubs getting together. Now, again, we want your life hub to be a place of everyday community and all the time connection and journeying together. But to have a rhythm where it's like, hey, let's just get back into alignment with what are we doing here? What are we actually about? That's right, God is a, is a God of mission and we are living as sent ones and we're, we're here to, to reconnect and to, to partner together and to link arms on this journey of seeing God's kingdom come and His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They help us to keep in time with God's rhythm, with God's timing, with God's focus and attention. They sink us back in time with what is most important. And again, it's not always what's most important to us, but it's what's most important to God. To be in a prophetic atmosphere, to have an opportunity just to be, oh, I just need someone just to pray for me right now because I'm struggling. If you don't have struggles in your relationship with Jesus, man, come and tell me a secret, please. Because I want to know. If your passion is, if you're just like, no, I'm 100% on fire all day, every day. I'm like, please come and tell me a secret. Because mine wanes sometimes. It, it gets hard sometimes. It's a struggle sometimes. And I'm so glad that I have people around me that can pour into me and support me and encourage me. And that's why God calls us together and draws us together. You know, for some of us, we need to slow down in this season. But actually, for some of us, we need to speed up a bit. We need to put our hand back to the plough because we've had a season of rest. We've had a, a year of Sabbath rest and the Lord's saying, cool, and now it's time to go back to start planting seeds and start tilling the soil and start preparing for harvest time. Oftentimes, even in this church community, we find people who come here and they're kind of a little bit burnt out. And then are lots of ministry and they're just kind of tired and, and they need a rest. And we're like, that's so awesome. Come and find rest. But at some point where maybe you were out of God's timing, you are out of His rhythm, that you were expending yourself beyond your capacity and not leaning into His capacity, you can come and you rest and now get back into alignment with the Lord start leaning into His capacity, start dreaming again of the things that the Lord has prophesied and declared over your life, and then start to see those things come about. This is the issue if we have, if we've been, maybe we've been stuck in religion and we get freed from religion, but then to go back and follow the Lord, we might be doing the exact same things as what we were doing when we were steeped in religion. Over here, I was doing it by demand. But over here in place of freedom, I live by command. The Lord was directing me here, but I took it as this heavy weight, this ball and chain. But now I've come into freedom and over here, I get to live and I get to do all the things that God has for me to do. But it's from a place of freedom and wholeness and life and joy and goodness. And it's not by my strength, but by His strength. Amen. And this is the thing, in the Lord, slowing down doesn't mean doing less. I found in slowing down, I'm doing more, or at least accomplishing more. There's more fruit coming out of my life. And this is an interesting thing. So this is for the musical nerds. I wanna talk about this, uh, this concept. It's called a shepherd tone. Um, it was created by a guy with a surname, Shepherd. And there's no H in it. It was Shep and then Ard, A-R-D. So a shepherd tone is, is like an ever increasing tone. So sound, so going like that, okay. 
But the way that it's put together in the music is that it's layered. Does everyone know what an octave is? So like, do, re, mi, fa, su, la, ti, do. Between do and do, that's called an octave, okay? But what you do in a shepherd tune is you layer three octaves over one another. So you've got the low and then a mid and then a high. And then as you go along in the time, you, with the, the lowest one, you're going from quiet, getting louder. The middle set of, the middle octave is a constant sound. And the higher octave is loud going down to soft. So what happens is it sounds like this tone is going, getting higher and higher and higher. And it's going, going up. And yet without your ear being able to perceive it, it kind of starts again. And it actually never reaches this high point, but your ear can't pick it up. So I've actually got an, a, a version of it that you can listen to. So tune in. About to take off. Freaking out yet? Someone notice it hasn't, it's kind of hasn't got any higher though. It's lovely. So if that was a normal tone, it would get up to this squeaky, crazy high pitch, but it's not. So they use this in, in movies. I think in a movie called Dunkirk in particular, um, they have in the orchestra and it builds this sense of kind of ominous momentum uh, in this movie of a building and yet it never gets any higher. And then they've also got a thing, it's kind of a shepherd tone, a shepherd rhythm, sorry, or a reset rhythm, and I'll play that for you. So this is then with a musical rhythm with the same principle. So it's getting faster. Faster, but it's not getting faster. Ga, 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 ga. That'll do. Is that cool? Even if you're not a musical nerd, you should appreciate that. So, so that again is done with a rhythm where you've got uh, beats, but then one starts to quiet out and then goes into a half beat and the next one's laid over the top and uh, it's, it's cool stuff. The reason why I stumbled across this thing, but I just found it interesting because you've got this sense of, of ever increasing and yet not getting any higher and, and kind of speeding up and building momentum and yet not getting necessarily any faster. And it just, I felt like there was a kingdom principle in this idea is that when the Lord starts to increase, when we get into rhythm with Him, all of a sudden, it's like things start to pick up. The momentum starts to increase and yet we don't start to get out of this kind of crazy pace that we're in. It's like, I'm, I feel like I'm going the same speed and yet things are going faster. I'm operating at the same level and yet things are going higher. And it's just the way that God works. It's outlined in Leviticus 26 as I read. It's like, if you get into rhythm with me, I will accomplish more, I will do more. There'll be acceleration and momentum and yet you'll feel like you're just cruising along. Now again, not that you will, there'll be no hardship, there'll be no struggle, but all of a sudden I think that's probably more of the pattern that people live in is like acceleration and then crash. You, know, you reach a certain speed, a terminal velocity, velocity, and then it just you, you hit that wall, and you can't, you know, and you crash and burn. 
but that's not in the Lord. You see, in God's timing, you can start to build momentum and He takes you to a new level and He starts to build this momentum and yet you're sustained and maintained in that process. Amen? When it comes to a corporate body, when it comes to us moving as the church, if we think about a band, when, when a band is in rhythm, when we are in rhythm with God, then naturally we're in rhythm with one another. Because again, God will have a corporate rhythm for us as a church community. But when a band is in rhythm, it releases a clear sound. There's a clarity that comes when we are all in rhythm with God. There is a clarity that comes. It means there's a prophetic clarity that comes when we're in rhythm with God. God's voice starts to come through, not just one person or a couple of people, but everyone starts to hear the voice of the Lord and there becomes a clarity that starts to be released. Amen? Again, sometimes in, in church environments, we can have you know, maybe a leader or a team of people that are always charging forward and then trying to get everyone, come on people, come on, catch up, catch up, catch up. We don't wanna operate like that. We want everyone to feel like we're all moving together. We're all in this together and God's speaking to everyone and we're all moving forward and no one's getting left behind, not because we're running around and looking after everyone, but because everyone's taking responsibility for their own rhythm, getting in alignment and saying yes to God. And so when, there's, when, when we are in rhythm together with God, it allows others to partner with God in that. It creates partnership. It's like people, I find my place. I know my place in the band, if you know what I mean. When we're in rhythm, it draws people in. There's, it's invitational in a sense. It's like when a band, I don't know if you've ever just, you listen to like amazing bands and you just think, that's awesome. It's, good. it's really bad if like, if worship bands ever get too good, it can be bad for like musical people because then you start to, you know, your attention gets drawn away from, you know, the Lord <laughs> and the Spirit and, and you're just, oh, that drummer's like amazing and you start worshipping the wrong things. You know, but there's something about music when it's done well, when there's rhythmic hooks, when there's timing and sharpness that just, it draws you in. It draws you into that place. And again, the most important thing is when we are individually in time and when we are corporately in time, we are in time with the conductor. That is the Lord. The Father is the great orchestrator. So then there's a natural flow of obedience that comes out of it, that we say yes to God because we're listening to Him, we're in His timing. So again, when God says move there, I say, that's good Lord, because I'm right there. He's not saying move there, and I'm, but Lord, I'm way back here, that's too far of a jump. It's like, no, the next step that the Lord asked me to take, I'm one step behind every time because I'm in His rhythm, I'm in His timing, I'm in step with the Lord. All right, a couple of practical steps we can take to get in time. So when things are out of rhythm, it helps to slow down, align yourself and then rebuild in unison with God. So you imagine in a band, if all of a sudden the band's out of timing, it's like, oh, let's just slow, slow it down, get back. Okay, where's the tempo? All right, that's it. Where's the rhythm? Cool, now we start. Now we can rebuild and everyone can come and join back in. Okay, so when, we, when it comes to us, if we feel I'm just out of timing with the Lord, I'm out of this, I'm out of a rhythm with God, then I need to actually slow down. I need to be quiet and I need to listen to what He's saying. Align myself with His rhythm. Some practical steps would be to set daily and weekly rhythms that help you to keep in time with Him. Don't, don't just assume that you're gonna be great at doing your journey with Jesus on your own because you're probably not going to be. And I mean, you might be a super disciplined, awesome person that's not like me. You just might be great at that. But I'm saying most people need help. For most of us, it's helpful to have rhythms, to have set times where we're engaging with God. Now that could be just a daily quiet time, a Sabbath rest day, when it comes to Sunday gatherings, just being committed. It's like, that's just what I do on a Sunday afternoon. Every fortnight, that's just what I do when I gather with my Life Hub family. You know, for us, for our Life Hub, I'm like, we're just gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna do a meal every fortnight on a Wednesday night. 
Whoever can make it, can make it. If you can't, you can't. It's okay. It's not about attending a meeting. But it's about knowing that there's a time where we're going to connect in together. And then outside of that, there's organic freedom and life for that for a relationship to happen. But we know there's just a rhythm, rhythm of connecting. It could be the prayer room, just knowing, hey, yeah, I've got Wednesday lunch times. I can come in here and, and participate or a Friday or Monday night, whatever it is, just knowing that there's a rhythm in my life that is going to connect me back in. Could be missional activities, different things that you're doing in your life that you know. Could be serving at the crew, helping out at certain times. Because I know when I do that, man, it just does something to reignite my faith. And you will know for you what, what sparks your heart for the Lord, what ignites your passion. And finding that, but don't just assume, oh, when it happens, it'll happen. So I'm actually going to be intentional in my life about building that in. And the final one is to lean into God's grace. Lean into His grace, His power, His strength. And there's a great scripture uh, in the, the message translation. I think Bethy might have read it out a few weeks ago, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. But it says, Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. But I love that. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. So the grace of God is His empowering presence. So when we're in rhythm with God, we have access to the power of God, the grace of God to accomplish what He has for us to accomplish. So living in the flow of God's grace, living in the shepherd's rhythm, not the shepherd rhythm, but the shepherd's rhythm, rhythm with Jesus. You know, Jesus had one life to inaugurate the establishment of God's kingdom on earth and to present the opportunity for, of salvation to, to all of humanity for all of time. One life, significant job description. Okay, I would think it's like, hey, just let you know, Jesus, going to be the saviour of the world one day. Okay, might want to do some preparation. <laughs> Onto it. All right, what are you going to do? Um, you're going to make some stuff out of wood. Cool, like you want to go to university, like you want to get a degree, do something, you want to practice, you know, leading billions of people, like you want to get, you know, do some leadership training maybe. They go to Bible college, something like that. No, no, it's all good. It's going to make tables and stuff. Spends 30 years of his life being a carpenter. Just chilling out, making stuff out of wood. I'd, I'd like that. I'd do that. It's a good job. And then he spent three years kind of just wandering around, hanging out with people, doing some cool miracles and stuff. But like it talks to him just eating meals with people. He wasn't frantic. He wasn't worried. He wasn't concerned. Do you think that Jesus could have accomplished what he had to accomplish in one year? Probably. Could he have stretched it out for 10 years? Sure. Could he have done it when he was 25? Absolutely. But when did he do it? At the appointed time. He just lived in a rhythm with God, knowing I just do what I see the Father doing. And when the time is right, then I'll act. When the time is right, then I'll move. And even in the midst of that, what would Jesus do sometimes? Like, cool, guys, I know I'm, I know I'm leading like this world-changing revolution. Um, I'm just going to go and have a bit of quiet time. If you don't have time for a quiet time with God, and yet Jesus had time to be with His Father, we've got to just recognise, maybe I'm inflating the priorities of my life to be a little bit more significant than what they really are. Because maybe if the Saviour of the world could take time out to rest, to be with friends, to be with His Father, maybe your life isn't as important and the things that you have to do, they're not quite as important as what maybe you think they are. Just saying. Just saying. In the midst of the most significant moment in history, Jesus found time to eat with people to spend time alone with the Father and to live in daily rhythms of work and rest. And in those rhythms, He accomplished all the work that the Father had for Him. When He said it is finished, He had accomplished what He had come to accomplish. But He did it in the Lord's timing. 
And I believe that's what the Lord wants for us as a people, to live in his timing, to live in his rhythm, to live in his ways, just simply as Jesus did. Follow that example. Amen? All right, can I pray for you? Why don't you stand? If your buzzer goes to get, collect your kids, you can just hold on for two minutes. Don't feel the need to rush out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, you are the great conductor. You are the great conductor of our lives, Lord. You are the great conductor of this church and every church, Father, in this city, in this region, in the nations, Lord. You are the God of all and you are the one that conducts our time, Lord. And we thank You, Father, You have an appointed time for all things, Lord. But Father, our responsibility is to come into alignment with Your timing, Lord, to come into alignment with Your rhythm. Lord, in, that, in order that we might come to a place of rest, that we might live in Your blessing, that we might walk in peace, not striving and not being lazy, Lord, but being right on time with You. Thank You, Father. And Father, for those who maybe just struggle with setting daily rhythms or weekly rhythms or... Father, I just pray that You would give us a grace. Lord, that we would come with fresh eyes and a fresh heart just to set apart time to be with You, Lord, to align ourselves with You. We wanna be in alignment with Your timing, Lord. We wanna hear clearly what You are saying. As individuals, Lord, as a church family, God, even though there's great things that could be done, we don't wanna do great things, we wanna do God things, Lord. We want to do what You have us to do, Lord. And I thank You, Father, as You invite us into that space, You'll meet us in that place. You want to be with Your people and You want us to be with You, Lord. So, Father, I just pray a grace that we would prioritise what You prioritise, Lord, that we would relinquish control where we need to, Lord, and we'd put our lives back into your hands. We'd come again before you. Even as the Apostle Paul said in Galatians 3, who has bewitched you? You started out by the Spirit, now you're trying to be perfected in the flesh. That's a people out of rhythm. So Lord, we come back into rhythm with you. As you brought salvation to us, Holy Spirit, you will bring sanctification through us, Lord. You will accomplish all that you desire to accomplish in us and through us, Lord. As we yield to your rhythm, as we yield to your plan, as we yield to your timing, Lord. And we thank you, Father, for the multiplication that is to come. That as we transition rightly with you, Lord, we will see greater things happen, Lord. Miracles, outpouring, salvations, Lord. Lives changed and transformed. We would, we would, there would be a sense of acceleration and yet an ease and a manageable pace that we'll live in because we'll live by Your grace. We thank You that You're leading us, Lord. We pray You help us to continue to follow. We bless You, Lord. Amen.